boy catching the street in winter where to pay it for it if you just outside of my reach. I followed the cat bear several more blocks. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. <laughs> when I realized the cat had stopped at the feet of a woman, I looked up and our eyes met. All there, my age, but she was dazzling. Let's just say she had a nice world of color. We made love at your place within the hour. And did you ever make love to her again? No, I didn't. Oh, see, there you are. She was there, you were kicking with each other. Men, why is one to not? Why wouldn't you make love to her again? I need her, but she died in our later. Oh, oh my. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Do 
We are talking about the universe and everything contained in it. But why stop there? <laughs> How big is this book? Oh, it's not big. It's about 70 pages. 70 pages? That's good. Not big. Maybe I can talk to one of my publisher friends. What's the title? Oh! <laughs> The Special Theory of Relativity! Catchy! I can't wait to not buy it. <laughs> is it funny? Because if it is funny, then you can really sell a lot of books. It's very funny. Oh, it's very funny! Well, that depends on what you mean by funny. <laughs> well, does it make you laugh? No. Chuckle? No. Smile? Oh, I wish I could say yes. So then it is not funny. Nope. <laughs> but you just said it was funny. I was trying to sell more books. <laughs> <laughs> well, could it have illustrations? No, nope. impossible. Oof. Why not? My look good. Give it some, some zip. The illustrations are only two-dimensional. I see what you mean. But a good draftsman can give you very realistic three-dimensional drawings. That sounds great. But I need four. I understand. I'm trying to help you here. You want your book to have an impact, don't you? Yeah. And for your book to have people read it, you've got to have people read it, don't you? Uh, sure. So, in your field, how many people do you figure have to read your book for it to have an impact? What? <laughs> no, no, no. For your book to have an impact, you've got to have a lot of people read it. Every person on the street has got to have one. No, no, no. Only one. Max. Max. Max Planck! Have you heard of him? He's a German physicist. He's very influential. If he reads my book, he will make my reputation. <laughs> well, you are lucky. If you know your market is one person, and you know his name, then you can put a limit on what you spend on advertising. How old are you? Oh, I'm 25. You don't look 25. I discovered at a very young age that I am the kind of person who will always look 86. <laughs> Last week I bought 12 bottles of Chablis at 17 francs each, but only 11 came. How much do I owe this guy? Uh, 137 francs. See, as long as we've got him here, we might as well use him. <laughs> I made a deal with Alphonse for a case of port at 26 francs each. He said if I bought six cases, he'd give me a discount, but he didn't know the UFC port. He said as the port arrived and was new in the 1900s, he'd give me a 4% discount, keeping 3% on the bottle before 1900 and 2% on the bottle before 1895. As the cases arrived, two cases had nine bottles dated after 1900 and 15 bottles dated before 1895. One case had 18% of the bottle dated before 1895 and the rest were evenly split between, between before 1900 and after 1900. The rest of the three cases after 1900, before 1900, and before 1895, respectively. How much the hell do I owe this guy? Oh, good grief. He stopped. Oh, you were talking to me? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> just, just kidding. Oh, that's your answer. Oh. 2,245 francs, 73 given that, um, X and parentheses Y. Uh, uh, 2,245, did you say Y and parentheses X? Y and parentheses X?
I'm glad the 19th century was over. It was a bad century. What's not to like about this century? Well, for one thing, the pollution. Soot, smoke, garbage, horseshit. You disagree? <laughs> no, I'm adding to the list. <laughs> <laughs> And what do you see for the future? Let me ask you, what do you see? I'll answer. I see air travel becoming common, with hundreds of people being carried in giant airplanes. I think we'll see images being sent through the air, with their receivers becoming so popular that mass taste will diminish their potential. The city of Hiroshima would become completely modernized. Mm. Uh. There will be a green place for non-flamingos. Cruelty will be perfected. And by the end of the century, smoking in restaurants will be banned. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh that's ridiculous. Music? <laughs> Music by four lads from Liverpool. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, oh, my God. God. Oh, next. Oh, well, <laughs> fine. I think a yo-yo would be a wonderful thing to play with, but a horrible thing to be. <laughs> <laughs> Here's mine. Led by Germany, this will be known as the century of peace. Clothes will be made from wax. There will be a craze for automobiles, but it will pass. <laughs> A carton of cigarettes will be known as one of the most thoughtful get well gifts. <laughs> and the Wright brothers will be long remembered for the invention of a low calorie fudge. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone in tonight? Not that you're looking for, Sago. I got a Matisse today. Small, but juicy. It's a little beach cake. Take a look. It says everything about Matisse you want to know. I bought it and only the government throw it in. The smaller it is, the harder it is to say it. No doubt about it. And that thing's got it all. This thing will move all. Pick it up there. Look at it. Beautiful. Still works. It's still working. It still holds the wall. Up to 10 feet away, that bar is working for the Matisse, then the bar takes over. Top it off, ready? Is it getting windy in here? <laughs> so, uh, what makes it so great? I'll show you what makes it great. This is what makes it great. The frame? The boundaries. The edge. Otherwise, anything goes. You want to see a soccer game where the players can run up into the stands with the ball in order up here? No, they've got to stay within the boundaries to make it interesting. In the right hand, this little space is as fertile as Eden. Or a little fertile Eden space is the size of my notebook. <laughs> well, I hope you treat your words carefully. Ideas are like children. You have to watch over them or they might go wrong. I know what he means. I told that to a culinary. He's squiggling his words. I'm going to turn a nice profit on that you watch. Well, considering you got it for free, it might not be that difficult. Wait, then if you got it for free, how are you going to sell it? I mean, obviously you must have got it because you loved it, right? What do you do? Oh, I'm a physicist. Oh, good. Then you must know how naive a question can sound. <laughs> I'll tell you how it works. When I bought it, I identified it. I identified it as something worth having. I have named it as a work of art. Once I've done that, I don't have to own it. It will always be mine. And I guarantee you, Matisse is happy about it too. He wants his work out there. I don't hear me. And I've sold to Russia, and I've sold to America, and I've sold to dealers in Paris who have sold everywhere. And the dealers like to buy from me because, frankly, they don't get it. And they want me to discern the good ones from the bad ones. So, uh, what did you learn to tell the difference then? I wish I knew. But I can look at two pictures that no one has ever seen before and know that that one is for me 
And that one is for someone whose idea of art is something ugly, done by a relative. They come to the galleries of bags and money and say, show me what you got, taste is no object. Another friend, oh, finally a customer. Freddy, take out the book. Oh, come on, no, take it out. Corbet. Corbet. Corbet? Oh, wait a minute, this is just a book about Corbet. You got the other ones. This is the other about Nancy. He's got a soul. Oh, look at him! Oh, we are killing on a toy. It's more sense of humor. All right, all right. That's enough. Who's this? Ah, was he here this evening? Uh, not yet. Are you meeting him here? Don't know. I can wait. A trifle hasty. Do you want to sell it? Oh, not for anything. For fifty francs. It is mine forever. Get into silence. It'll be worth more. Hey, Sego, you're the expert here? What do you see? Oh, that? I see a 500 pound lemon. What? I know that there are two subjects in paintings that no one will buy. One is Jesus, and the other is sheep. <laughs> Love him as much as they want. No one really wants a painting of Jesus. Let's say you're having friends over, having a few drinks, and there's Jesus over the sofa. <laughs> Somehow it doesn't work. And not in the bedroom either, obviously. <laughs> I mean, you want Jesus watching over you, but not while you're in a missionary position. <laughs> you could put him in the kitchen, maybe. But then that's sort of insulting to Jesus. Jesus. Ham sandwich. Jesus, ham sandwich. I wouldn't like it, and neither would he. You know, you can't sell a male nude either, unless they're a messenger. Why a messenger would want to be nude, that I don't know. You think they'd at least want a little pouch or something? <laughs> In fact, if a nude man showed up at my door and I asked, who is it? And he said, messenger, I would damn well look and see if he has a pouch. And if he doesn't, I'm not answering the door. <laughs> She's for the same. Don't ask me why. Can't tell him. Here's what I go and get. A month goes by, no one I dip with from the other. People come in, people go out. So why do all the not show me one evening? <laughs> Picasso is definitely coming in tonight. So I hope he comes in. Me too. He owes me a barbell. Enter this medium. Maybe I could get a painting out of him. Well, it seems we all have an interest in Picasso. Why don't we give a little toast to him? We can do that, I guess. To Picasso. Picasso! Oh. <laughs> I have been thinking about sex all day. Can't get it out of my mind. I have been thinking about it for 62 years. Oh, I did 16 drawings. Two are pencil, the rest in ink. All women. What does that tell you? It tells me a painter has the obligation to stay sexually exhausted. Otherwise, the line drips off the easel, out the window, and across the street to the groceries daughter. You are proposing a toast? Um, yeah, to... Picasso. <laughs> Yay, to him. I mean, did you talk about anything else besides me? Did the weather come up? No, it was mostly about you, actually. God, I feel good. How lucky for you to be talking about someone and then in they come. Anyways, how do I look? Be honest. <laughs> That's fault. We need to do something about that. Why don't you come by tomorrow? I have something to show you. Something's afoot. The moment is coming. I can feel it. The last one's work was spectacular. I sat in front of the last piece I got from you with some friends and explained it for two hours. Did they get it? Don't know. They left after the first hour. <laughs> Forget it. That was piss. Piss, I tell you. This is different already. There is <laughs> If I can think it, I can draw it. I used to have an idea then, a month later, I would draw it. The idea was a month ahead of its execution. Now, the idea is ahead of the pencil, only by minutes. One day, they will be simultaneous. Do you know what that is like? The feeling of clear, undiluted vision. I have a vague idea. Oh, are you an artist? 
No, I'm a scientist. But I'll tell you, sometimes I feel like an artist that... Well, multiply by a thousand and you'll always like to be me. <laughs> I don't think we have a pleasure. <laughs> well, you have! <laughs> my name's Picasso. How nice for you! Look at it. It's a dog! <laughs> How much? 50 francs? That's a good price, oh. isn't it? See, that's fair. I guess it's the price for fame. Yours is letters. 
Yours is lime. My life means something. So do I. Mine is beautiful. Men have swooned on seeing that. My touch is the heart. Mine touches the head. Mine will change the future. Oh, so mine won't.
funny? I guess it was. It was very funny. I laughed. <laughs> <laughs> no, you did not. Not now. It's an icebox laugh. What's an icebox laughing? Yeah, you don't laugh now, but an hour later when you're standing at home in front of the icebox, you laugh. <laughs> 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 there you go, he just got it. <laughs> so, I might laugh at the joke later. You mean I might. Oh, I did laugh. You could say that. There you go, he just got it now. Oh no, I'm laughing at some things that happened a year ago. I remembered it and I owed it a laugh. Well, the thing that happened a year ago wasn't funny, and now you're really laughing at my joke. Well, that's a good theory, but there's a problem. Oh, what's that? The thing that happened a year ago was when the cat went running across the kitchen floor to relieve through the cat dog, but it was locked. Now there's no way that wasn't funny. <sighs> How about you, my dear? What do you say? I have my example of a bad joke. Oh, come on. You're a cruel, womanizing bastard. Oh, if you're trying to praise me, that's a poor choice of words. <laughs> <laughs> you're ridiculous. Look, I meant everything I said to you last night. I just forgot who I said it to. <laughs> A tan hat moon on the wall, holding a candle. On the bedside table, there were three rings, side by side, with small turquoise stones. One with garnet, and next to them a pair of pink ribbons. Later, we picked it up off the floor. I can't remember your name. I never told you. Ooh, yes, you did. I remembered them. I never told you. Yes, you did, Suzanne. I can't remember. My ear was an inch away from your mouth. You said your name to me, then spoke words half whispered, passionate, scaring the meaning. Do you remember? Yes. I drew three pictures of you from memory. You did? But I can be better. <laughs> I'll be there later. If that's a coincidence, so will I. I should go now. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> Goodbye now. When will you be there? On the place, over. What's it made of? 
and I'll tell you what it's made of. Equal parts of asbestos, kitten paws, and radium. The only problem with it is that building considerations only allow it to be used in Los Angeles, San Francisco, and the small island of Krakatoa. <laughs> But still, that's a big market. So everyone, have a drink. What is Han Yu? No. Just have a drink. And remember my name. Schmendemann. You see, there's a distinction between talent and genius. Talent is the ability to say things well, but genius, oh, is the ability to well, say things. <laughs> a million in a year, but genius sells 5,000 a year for 200 years. Can you compute that or am I moving too fast for you? <laughs> you have to work to have talent, but genius comes gift wrapped in a blue box from two. Hey, who knows? Picasso, Einstein, Benjamin. <laughs> somehow does not have a which one's Picasso? Ah, uh, I've heard of you. Nice work, if you like blue. Go to the <laughs> It's about time for a Spaniard again. It's been a long time since the S quest time just the old year. Oh! It would be interested in my process. Our relation is easy. Just follow the path of least resistance. You have to write, but you feel like dancing? Dance. You have to paint, but you feel like singing? Sing. That's what I did. Hey, remember, the shortest distance between two points is a foot and a half. No pun intended. <laughs> no pun achieved. I struggled to be a writer, but my heart told me to invent an inflexible and brittle building material. Which, by the way, is called Chimena. So that's what I did. Now I know my place in history is secure. I followed my heart. Next bar. I just had another idea. A tall, pointy cap for dunces. <laughs> <laughs> I admire his confidence and nothing else. Yeah, he's the way I see it. We're not so much going to change the century. So much as we're going to thank it. Let's say Picasso here. He's a genius. I know we are getting into the realm of fantasy, but bear with me. The um century? Come on. The century? I won't need that. The century is flying along through space, and it twists up to the speed, it flies off in another direction, like a um, comet turning left in the sun. The century. The century. The century is zigzagging along, it's grand, bending, it's curving, influenced by powerful gravitational forces, like the Oslo. The century because we're hit, busy going straight. How can something be good but appear to be straight? Come on, buddy. Oh, hmm. I never thought about that. How about the horizon, you nitwits? Are you trying to keep my gold? No, I'm trying to explain something. And you'll be happy to know that not only is horizon something that's good but appears to be straight, so is like space in general. Horseshit! So that's just the way it is. It's not. It's two. It's not. It's two. It's not. It's two. It's not. Neo. Close. Neo. Close. It is not. Mine is not involved. It's okay. It's not. 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 It's not.
Yes, then. You have to hear a woman's opinion on things. It's no woman's opinion, it's a science. What? <laughs> <laughs> Are you saying that a man cannot be a scientist? No, I am saying there is no gender related opinions on this matter. Okay, Madame Pierre did not say, I think I discovered radio. I better check this a man. No, no man's opinion, no woman's opinion. It is sexless. I know the feeling. <laughs> what I just said is the absolute end all, the final, not subject to opinion, truth depending on where you're standing. Are you wrong? Yeah. <laughs> so much thinking. You should try it. How do you draw something? It seems so impossible. Oh, it's all the wrist. I maintain the wrist starts up here. I have an idea. <laughs> Which century? Two years ago, I had to paint my shoulders. I had to figure out a color. Should it be a light color or a dark color? For a while, of course, blue seemed nice. Then I realized there's no such colors for us blue. <laughs> I tried to get the coin, but lost it on the roof. I started thinking, what are shutters anyway, and what would that natural color be? Then I realized shutters don't occur in nature, so they don't have a natural color. But then I thought about taking off the shutters. Then I started to think about moving to a land where there are no shutters. And frankly, suicide. <laughs> but then one day, there was a cell and we beat, and that was it. <laughs> Ooh, <coughs> my process is just like that. Ooh. Well, leave out the start, all the middle parts, of course, and jump to that. If I asked myself what color I wanted, it would have slowed me down. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> well, I just see other painters struggling, killing themselves over the demon, and I don't get their work. I just put the pencil to the paper, and it comes out. Not the crap, mind you, that was difficult to get. Ooh, the ideas are a different matter. The ideas swoosh down on me. They fall like rain. They land in a crash. Yeah, they thunk too. Absolutely, they thunk. You too? Yes, and pop. Pop all well, the time that goes without saying. They never seem to flow. Never flow. Well, sometimes. <laughs> yeah, they flow sometimes. <laughs> well, where did they come from? These Ideas. Oh, before me, artists who seek their ideas from, from the past. But as of this moment, they are coming from the future. Fast and loose. Absolutely, from the future. I think in the moment of pencil and paper, the future is mapped out in the face of the person drawn. Imagine that the pencil is pushed hard enough and then that goes through the paper into another dimension. A kind of fourth dimension, if that was one. Uh, yes. I can't believe you're saying this. A, a fourth dimension. And that fourth dimension is the future. Wrong. <laughs> the pencil pokes into the future, sucks up idea, and transfers up to the paper. For Christ's sakes! And what the hell of you know about Anyways, you are scientists, you just want theories. Yeah, and like you, the theories have to be beautiful. You want to know why the sun doesn't revolve around the earth? Because in order to make that happen, you have to have all the planets moving backwards and the sun doing these weird loop to loops. It's just ugly. It's way too ugly. So you're saying you bring a beautiful idea into it. We create a system and then we see if the facts fit. So you're not just describing the world as it is. We're creating a whole new way of seeing it. So you're saying you dream the impossible and put it into effect. Exactly! Brother! <laughs> oh, oh, please! You two are starting a lot of bullshit. Oh. <laughs> when, when I think that the true reason that you got into physics and you got into art in the first place was to meet girls. What? Do you really think? I say to myself, how can I meet a lot of girls? Oh, I know. I will develop a unified field of theory. <laughs> <laughs> Thing around and you decided to, uh, I don't know, 
Take a different route. First of all, I am quite frankly disgusted. Second of all, I will have you know the Countess! Alfred! Did you go to the Baroos? Of course not. That's where you said we meet. That's stupid of me. Of course we come here. Now, what was that you were saying about it being impossible to distinguish motion produced by an outside gravitational force? She is sexy. <laughs> <laughs> Distinguish two bodies when you fly it in a field. Get you anywhere. 
because it's already got you there. You're unreachable. The whole act is, is a camouflage. But you are lucky because you have the talent that you are too wise to use. And because of that, you will always be desirable. And so, when you wear one woman out, there will always be another who wants to taste it, who wants to know what it is like to be next to someone like you. And so, you'll never have to earn a woman, and you'll never have to appreciate one. I appreciate women. I draw them, don't I? Well, that is because you're so goddamn beautiful, isn't it? Jermaine, men want and women are wanted. That's the way it is, and that's the way it'll always be. That may be true, but why be greedy? By the way, I knew you were using me, but I was using you back. Oh, how? Uh, now I know what the painter is like. Tomorrow night a street paper may be, or a news agent, or a bookseller. A street paper may not have much to talk about with a girl like me, but I can write my romantic scenarios and pull them down in front of me like a screen to project my fantasies onto. Like you project your fantasies onto a piece of paper. How does writing fit in? Why are you in love? Because occasionally, very occasionally, she says something so profound that I'm just glad to have been there. But really, what I wouldn't give for a country boy. Well, I could see son of a bitch in time, but for it. I heard that he comes here, is that true? I mean, is that really true? Oh my god! Oh my god, you may have approached you! May I really approach? I mean, what is it like to be? I mean, wait a minute. You're not Schmendeman! <laughs> what? <laughs> Another typical night! I learned something here tonight. Poor Sir Gaston, you take a couple of geniuses, put them in a room, and she will appear. Boy, you really know how to turn a phrase? What I mean is, these two men are smart. That's what it must take to be a genius. Brains is an incredible amount of brains.
Oh, if only I could sing songs about love. No more paints or brushes. Just the moonlight, the June light, and you. In the summer mm -hmm. evenings, I would sit at the sing and sing, sing, sing. Ah, uh, people gathered in a smoky cabin to hear the long silence of Albert Einstein appearing nightly with the Kentucky. See what I mean about y'all little pretty nice folks? Just six cuddle a little close It's a good feeling. Yes, it is. 
And think that many people have? Oh, no, no they don't. Hard to know what's happening. Till it's over. Don't tell anyone that. Better tell them the things you always knew. Yes, sir. Don't let anyone on the fact that we can't help it. We are like the chickens that cross the road. We do it if we don't know why. Yes, sir. And remember, in a sense, we will exult because we are regiments. Well, uh, that's a pretty bold statement, Mr. Picasso. Considering we both took our ideas from the art of the Negro. to sell out our names across the heavens. My God! It's a miracle. <laughs> Just like in Vegas. There's my name. Oh, and there's mine too. It's even spelled right. <laughs> you know, I don't see yours though. Oh yeah, it's there. Right above both yours. And three times as big. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hmm. You used to a gentleman, because that's the way it works. You know, I want to have the time to make enough things. Oh, I want to make Putin's apple leaf back into the damn tree. I want to come at them through the radio and break their hearts. I want to show them the thousand years of tenderness in a woman combing her hair. Oh, I want to give them ideas that will take them light speed to the edge of the universe. I want them to not be so lonesome tonight. <laughs> I think we should toast. You got oh, it. I think we should toast to the 20th century. Why the 20th century? Heck, I don't know. Why? Because this century, the accomplishments of scientists and artists outshone the accomplishments of politicians and government. We shall see it. You can take that to the bank. I know what he means. You always know what everybody means. What exactly does he mean, Freddy? Simple. He means that in the 20th century, no political movement will be as glorious as the movement of the line across the paper, the notes across the staff, or the idea across the mind. Oh. You see what I mean? I do what I can. I'll start the toast. You are all pretty good rhymers. The pendulum swings to the left. The pendulum swings to the right. The past is driven by horses. The future is driven by lights. Coconuts. Oh, oh thanks. <laughs> the mistakes of the past are over. The modern waits to be met. The pelican is a funny. Say goodbye to the age of indifference. And say hello to the age of regret. <laughs> <laughs> to the 20th century? 20th century? To, to the, the 20th, 20th century. century! Ain't it funny? 
how the play fit exactly between the tiles. The lines went up and the lines went down.